can hepatitis virus be transmitted via saliva or body fluids? If you just give me a few minutes of your moment, I will be able to tell you the ways in which one can contract hepatitis virus. Ways to prevent it and the difference between hepatitis B and hepatitis C. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this channel, Nos Hadi TV. In today's video, we are going to look at how hepatitis can be transmitted and ways to prevent the transmissions and if possible, the possible remedies and treatment of hepatitis, especially hepatitis B and C. Hepatitis, in a layman understanding, is an inflammation of the liver. When the liver gets inflamed, it's called hepatitis. There are different factors that can inflame the livers. We have what is called virus, we have what is called chemicals, and even malaria as well can inflame livers. But our main concern here, we are going to focus on viral hepatitis and the way of their transmissions. We have up to A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, up to K viral hepatitis. But the most common one that is, in fact, is disturbing uh, human is called hepatitis B and hepatitis C. So, how can one contract hepatitis B and hepatitis C? Most of their mode of transmission is similar to that of HIV. That is to say, one can contract it via uh, prick, body uh, pricked. That is the person where we are giving someone injections and accidentally the, inje uh, the injections pricked you. One can contract it, like that, like that of HIV. So hepatitis B and C can be contracted via this way too. And hepatitis B and C can also, they are blood bound. Though hepatitis C is also, hepatitis B, is, one can contract it via blood fluids, like cement. One can contract hepatitis B here. And ways of transfer, other ways of transfer, uh, contracting them, a uh, mother to child, that is during childbirth, one can also contract hepatitis B. So also hepatitis C. One can also contract hepatitis B and C if someone uses uh, contaminated uh, needles. That is, you, you inject somebody with needles and you also use that needle to inject, to give injection to another person. One can also contract hepatitis B via this way. This picture I'm, set, I'm displaying on this screen is a typical liver disease or liver disease. Look at it. This is the liver. Uh, how when someone becomes contracted with HIV and hepatitis, this is how the liver will look like. So now, now the difference between Hepatitis B and hepatitis, those of their contraction, as I said, hepatitis B can be is, is a blood-bound and body fluid uh, virus. It can be gotten in the blood, it can also be gotten in the body fluid. But that of, that of hepatitis C is unlikely for one to contract it via semen, that is during sexual intercourse. So now, what are the ways of preventing the contractions. Before going to that, let's look at the uh, the signs and symptoms. The most at earlier age, earlier stage, they don't present with any symptoms. They are just asymptomatic. That is, one cannot feel anything. That's why people they call it silent killer or silent killer disease. But at later on, one we we started experiencing headaches. Uh, uh, body weakness, fatigue, uh, loss of appetite, sometimes emaciation, sometimes uh, yellow of the jaundice. These are the symptoms that will come at earlier stage. Those jaundice becomes at the later stage. 
but fatigue, nausea, loss of appetite, these are the common symptoms that one can comes out when having hepatitis. So when you started having these symptoms, the best thing to do is to go and go to hospital, explain things to them. Let maybe the doctor would order for some investigation like malaria, typhoid, and uh, food block and sometimes viral screening, HIV, hepatitis B and C. And if you are found to be negative, that is where we come to, uh, to prevention. Now, how do you prevent hepatitis? Fortunately and unfortunately, fortunately for hepatitis B, hepatitis B has viral uh, vaccines. Look at the one. This vaccine, when you take it three shot, uh, you are covered. Though the PKC is not 100% because of the human errors. But once you are able to complete this uh, three shot, first month, based on the duration given, so you are covered. But like uh, that of hepatitis C, there's not yet a discovered hepatitis C uh, vaccines. So what of, in terms of their chronicity, which one goes chronic than the other? Hepatitis B is less to go into chronicity than hepatitis C. Yes, hepatitis B is less. About 90% uh, of people who got hepatitis B, they cannot move on to chronicity. Let me say 80 to 90%. But about 60 to 80% of people having hepatitis C, they develop chronic hepatitis C. So look at the terms of their chronicity. So hepatitis B also can be cured within, no, oh, can be cured, yes. That is during an acute state of hepatitis C. The body itself can clear it off within four to 12 weeks. And once your body clear it off, now your body will develop an immunity to it. Whenever you come in contact with the hepatitis B virus, you cannot contract it. But that of hepatitis C, your body, even, 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 you, even you, uh, you are giving drugs to clear it off, you can be cured with hepatitis C. Sure, you can be cured with hepatitis C. But even though you are cured with hepatitis C, and you are giving a drug, you are, you are classified that you are cured, you can also be infected. Meaning, you can also contract it. To see? Hepatitis B, when it gets to chronicity, it cannot be cured. Get me right. Hepatitis B, when it gets to chronicity, it cannot be cured. There is management for life. But hepatitis C, you can be cured from it, and you can also be reinfected. Or you can also be getting it back. But that will be, once you are cleared off at the early stage, you cannot get it again. So these are the difference between hepatitis B and hepatitis C. Now, coming to my question, is it true that one can contract hepatitis B or hepatitis via saliva? I cannot say no, I, I cannot say yes. There's no known research that one can contract hepatitis, hepatitis via saliva. The only factor that is there, whether one can contract it, is that when during the process of you know exchanging saliva between you and your partner, and there, there is a cord within the lining of your mucosa. Now that cord, you have two cords. She, uh, your partner has it, and you two have it. So when there is an exchange, you know there is a communication between the two gap, the two uh, gaps. So when there is an exchange of the the uh, blood between your, you and your partner, so these are the likely way in which one can contract hepatitis. So also, during uh, sweat, also there's no evidence of that. But also when you come in contact with somebody and there's a cut, so there's a likelihood in which one can contract hepatitis. But saliva alone and sweat alone, one cannot contract hepatitis via it. What about are sharing ethosis, eating in the same dish, and all these are the misconceptions about hepatitis. There's no known evidence or no known fact that one can contact hepatitis via this via these ways. So now how can you now prevent hepatitis? As I said, hepatitis has hepatitis B has vaccine, but hepatitis don't have vaccine. So once you are tested negative, please and please go and take vaccines. These are the 
first thing that you need, you need to you need to do yourself and your family. When you are positive, when you are negative, go for vaccination. And when you are positive, try and gather all your loved ones and relationships, people that are coming in contact with them regularly. Ask them to go and do tests when they are free. The first thing to do is to vaccinate them. These are the first thing that these are the first love that you can show to your loved ones. After that, nothing you can do. Now coming to hospital on a regular basis, try to prevent the stages of you know four stages of liver cirrhosis, uh, liver diseases. Try to come on regular follow up with your doctor, and your doctor now will tell you what to do. So these are the simple way in which one can contract hepatitis, and these are the ways in which one can contract can prevent from contracting of hyper from contracting hepatitis A, D, B, or C. That of A, that of C, that of D, and the other, they can be they are mild. They are mild. Like A is getting pico aura, like D is also broadband, but it can be cured. They, also, they exist in the presence of any other any other disease. So also, there is a point to note here: hepatitis B and hepatitis C they can occur together. It's not hepatitis B that is meant our person to see. Hepatitis B is different from hepatitis C. So now, when you can have both hepatitis B and C, so once you have hepatitis B, try when you have hepatitis C, try and prevent yourself from hepatitis B. So this is Nos Hadi. And this is my channel. The only thing I need from you is to like this video and to share my video. So also to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Bye-bye.